Hey YouTube, it's JP Woodstock from Oracle Reptiles. How are you guys doing today? Um, got some exciting news. We've got a new arrival today at uh, Oracle. Got a brand new female Amazon tree boa. Um, she's sitting in the cage there behind us. I'll, uh, I'll bring her out just now. We'll have a chat about her, um, the new arrival. We um, have a little chat about Amazons in general. Um, what they like as captives, how uh, how well they do in captivity, and uh, yeah, let's take it from there. Before we take her out, uh, let's have a little chat. Um, those of you who've seen my previous videos on the Amazons and the the babies being born here, obviously, you know, in terms of description, Amazon tribos get to. Uh, between 1.5 and 2 meters, 2 meters exceptionally, generally they're about 1.6 meters, somewhere around there. Um, obviously come in a variety of color variations from the, the garden phase, which is a brown or olive green color with markings or the lack of markings there on them, um, right through to calicos and blood reds and oranges and yellows. The, the list is almost endless. Um, they're amazing animals. They they're one of the boa species with the greatest, or one of the tree boa species with the greatest uh, distribution. They're found in South America in countries like Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Brazil, Costa Rica, Peru, Bolivia. Uh, so, yeah, they they come from a massive, massive area. Um, they tend to spend most of their time in trees, um, which is why they they're such thin, long-bodied snakes. From a temperature, I mean temperament and behavior point of view, uh, that is probably the most challenging thing about keeping Amazons is that uh, they are prone to biting and you know because of their long thin bodies they have rather prehensile tails, they can uh, attach themselves to a branch and strike pretty damn far, about half the length of their body. Um, and their teeth are quite large. Obviously, they eat birds uh, as part of their natural diet in the wild. So to get through the feathers and that, the their teeth are recurved and um, yeah, are rather long. So I'm expecting a little bit of blood tonight. Uh, we take out the the new snake, but um, yeah, it should should be fun. Let's uh, let's introduce you to the new female. She looks excited. Let me go get a, a L stick quickly. Look at this beauty. Absolutely new arrival. Uh, just got her today from uh, a friend of mine, Yuri. He, uh, he's had her since 2018. Absolute gorgeous animal. Look at the, the markings on that. Eh? Absolutely beautiful. She's uh, relatively calm uh, considering the fact that she is a new arrival. Um, yeah, so let's. Let's hope she stays that way. She looks in pristine condition, absolutely pretty. Got some nice red markings, some nice orange. Should go very, very well with the other Amazons that we have here and some of the breeding projects that we have. Um, I'm excited to see what babies she will produce for us in the future. Obviously, she's too young to breed this season, but from next season, uh, I have no doubt that she'll, she'll be able to produce for us. Absolutely amazing animals. As you can see about their long thin bodies, they spend a lot of time in in the trees, obviously, and when setting up their cage, it's advisable to give them opportunity to move from branch to branch as opposed to up and down. So, you know, the cage doesn't need to be extremely high, um, but they do need place to move. Uh, laterally in the cage between branches. We have uh, set up one before 
if you, you watch the, the video in the link now, you'll see um, how we do it. We give them ample opportunity to hide, plenty of place for them to move around. And um, yeah, this one we've set up here in one of the Amazon, I mean the Exoterra cages. She has ample, ample place to move around. We have a heat source from the top in one corner to provide her with a thermal gradient. If she needs to heat up, she can sit there and heat up. If she wants to cool down, she can move to any other area in the cage. Just an update on one of the babies that was born here um, a while ago, one of the females that was kept back. Look how well she's doing, she's growing somewhat, uh, beautiful coloration, nice yellowy orange color, some markings. Most amazing thing about these snakes is those piercing eyes, they have absolutely, there we go, trying to make friends. Absolutely beautiful eyes um, that are quite prominent. They stick out quite well. These snakes are obviously nocturnal. Um, so there tends to be a bit more, uh, how can we say, hunting aggression or aggression basically at night. Um, when they can mistake, you know, a warm hand for a prey item. They do have, if you very closely they do have um, just on the side of the mouth they've got heat pits and they can pick up uh, changes in temperature very very small t changes in temperature and they use this to to hunt for their prey which includes birds bats lizards rodents all sorts of things so yeah they are absolutely phenomenal and a very very variable species it's one of our bigger garden phase girls She's in the cage, busy moving around, hunting. Um, you have her with her boyfriend, hiding up in the branches over there. She's going to have to get to know us a little bit better, obviously. Right, I've taken one of our adult males out, as you can see here he is here. Also quite a red, uh, red-orange coloured male. Um, he's actually the father of that one I showed you a little bit earlier, that little holdback. Uh, absolutely gorgeous animal as well. In South Africa, Amazon tree bow is made from September, which is the beginning of spring. Uh, they're made through September to December and then, well, starting September and generally we can start expecting babies from the end of February into March, which is just before autumn. Um, so yeah, they mate, mate in springtime and then obviously just into, into autumn. With their enclosure, as I said earlier, um, they, they prefer moving laterally, left and right, as opposed to up and down. So if you give them lots of space to, to crawl around, they'll settle very quickly. Heat on one side um, to allow them to thermoregulate. Um, as I said uh, in our previous video, we use cocoa husk on the floor of our enclosures. Uh, the reason we do that is because they do like humidity of between 50 to 70%. Um, and using cocoa husk does help uh, keep up the humidity uh, a little bit and obviously it's a lot easier to spot clean um, and then when needed you can just change it out quite quickly. Um, the guys in the States use it. Um, I think there's a, obviously a, a few different varieties. I know ReptiChip is one of them. Uh, I'm not sure of the other names. When it comes to, to the enclosure itself, water must obviously always be provided. Um, a lot of keepers like to mist their, their snakes and let the snakes drink with themselves. 
they they do do that but they also need a constant supply of water um what i have done i don't know if you can see i've got a water bowl on that side of the enclosure which is above the the heat pad and i have one on the cold side um, what that does is it keeps the humidity up the the warm water tends to to help with the humidity fortunately in durban humidity is not really such a big issue uh, we do <laughs> we do have a pretty subtropical climate um, this makes sizing me up here for a bite we do have a, a nice subtropical climate humidity is very good um, most of the time and absolutely perfect for amazons so yeah we'll uh we'll go let's put it that way food wise you know as babies you can start off with defrosted pinks um, a little bit of tease feeding try and warm the the pink up a little bit in a bit of warm water and they, they should take it with no hassles what i like to do is put them in a, a relatively simple um, setup as as babies with just some mesh uh, netting or the plastic weld mesh let me see if i can find some for you something like this gives them amp ample space to hold on bend it put it into the tub and then you can just monitor the snake when you see they're looking down um, as they hunt in the wild they'll they'll look down for movement in that uh, you just bring the the pink up under them move it around a little bit and yeah there should be no hassle they'll generally grab uh, constrict a little bit and then eat as they get older obviously you can move on to to larger prey items we alternate between uh, rats small rats small to medium rats for our big adults and adult mice for the inter you know the in-between sized animals so yeah you can you can give them uh, multivitamin supplements uh, occasionally but generally if you're feeding whole prey items like rats or mice it's not necessary um, they will get it but there is no harm in giving a really really good quality multivitamin you know dusted onto the the prey items so once a month or whatever right these are amazing amazing animals and um, they are phenomenal display animals uh, you can really do up their uh, enclosures really nicely they um, will never cease to amaze you they don't tend to hang around as much as the green tree pythons in one spot they like to move they're very active at night um, and they make awesome awesome captives provided their their needs are are catered for all right guys if uh, if you enjoyed this video please uh, remember to subscribe to the channel uh, we really appreciate the guys that have subscribed um, like the the video and share it we'll turn on the notifications so that you guys don't don't miss any oh there we go saying hello miss any future uh, videos from us we really appreciate you you taking the time to watch thank you cheers